These two give me really strong don't talk to me and my son ever again vibes. What is up everyone? My name is Ken also known as Wiltshire. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I want to introduce you guys to Miniflex. And Miniflex is a small form factor Dell Optiplex 5070. On the inside of this small form factor chassis is a full fledged gaming computer with a full size graphics card. Miniflex took me a very long time to figure out and I'm very excited to show you guys what this little guy can do in today's video. So we're gonna quickly take a look on the inside of Miniflex so I can show you guys the magic and the pain and planning that I had to do to make this thing work. So we're gonna use the overhead camera for this and as you can see on the overhead camera we have a ventilated side panel. Now the ventilated side panel is not stock. I did this myself. I had to drill 200 and seven holes for this ventilated side panel. I really wanted a windowed side panel on this computer to show off the full size graphics card because let's be honest, how often do you see a small form factor Dell PC with a full size graphics card in it? You never do. Obviously it's not designed to have a full size graphics card in it. So the heat from the graphics card was getting dumped into the CPU and then the CPU was dumping its hot air into the GPU. I also drilled 21 holes in the bottom of Miniflex just so the power supply can get some fresh air. I also added four rubber feet on the bottom of Miniflex to bring Miniflex up off the ground for more fresh air. With that said, let's take the side panel off of the computer. So as you can see, this is the magic that is Miniflex and there is a lot going on in here. So the very first thing that you're all probably here for is the full size graphics card. Now the graphics card I went with is the EVGA 1660 Ti XC Gaming Edition. This card is a very thick boy. And what I mean by thick boy is that it's almost a three slot card. So I was very, very concerned on if I could get this card to fit inside Miniflex because Miniflex obviously isn't very deep of uh, a computer chassis. This is actually kind of a floating GPU design. I have it sitting on shelf brackets, 90 degree angle shelf brackets. And I'm using the pre-existing drill holes for the PCIe bracket that comes attached to the card. Uh, so I could mount it to those brackets and it's kind of floating above the NVMe drive that I have in here And I have an NVMe SSD in here, which is a Samsung 960 Evo Plus and that is our boot drive and storage drive So we have one SSD in here because I cannot use a SATA SSD There's no room for it and I just can't get the cables to get there uh, because this is a cable nightmare, this computer. It is not fun. There was a few more issues with getting the graphics card connected to the motherboard because it needed a lot of riser cable adapters. So with the way this graphics card is orientated with the video ports facing upward like this, the slot for the PCIe connector is backwards. So I needed to find a right angle riser cable adapter somewhere, somehow. I managed to source run from China, which took about a month to get here. So I have like a right angle, 90 degree angle adapter plugged into a 90 degree angle riser cable and then it's plugged into the motherboard. So that took a long time. So this riser cable is a 220 millimeter riser cable from Fantex plugged into a non-generic right angle PCIe adapter and then the, it's plugged into the graphics card. We went with a Noctua 9H L9i instead of the stock Dell cooler because Let's be honest, Dell doesn't know how to use a good CPU cooler at all. They just, they suck. They're, they're terrible. They're pretty much like an Intel stock cooler. So I went with the uh, low profile NHL9i for the i5-9500 that's in this computer. And it works out pretty good. It keeps the i5-9500 in check in terms of temperature. Dell likes to use their own proprietary power supplies for some reason. So we had to use an aftermarket one in order to get enough wattage to power of the 1660 Ti. This is a Silverstone TX500. It's a 500 watt TFX power supply, but I had to mutilate the case kind of. I had to cut a bunch of parts of the case out. I had to drill a few rivets out. I had to take the locking mechanism on the side panel off that was riveted into the side off so I could get the power supply to fit. And then I had to drill a few holes to line up the screw holes for the power supply. So the power supply was a pain in the butt to get working even with this computer. Another thing that's a pain about this power supply is it is not modular in any sense of the imagination. I'm not sure how well you can see it, but I have uh, two Noctua fans on the backside of the computer for exhaust and they tend to do an okay job. I would like to add another one, but I can't because there's like a spring loaded hinged mechanism for the side panel here, right here, as you can see and it just gets stuck on the fan at the top here. So I actually had to sand the fan a little bit to get this mechanism to work for the side panel, to lock the side panel into place. 
and the motherboard only has one fan header. So there's a fan hub that is controlled with the RPMs coming off the CPU cooler. So the CPU cooler is the master, uh, and then these two guys are the slave fans, so they follow the RPM of the CPU cooler because there's only one power, or rather fan header on the motherboard for me to use. So that's pretty much the inside of Miniflex in a nutshell. It's very cramped in there, but it's quite the little beast. So with Miniflex hooked up, the benchmarks that we'll be doing today is in 1440p and 1080p. I will try to get the best settings out of them. They're probably a mix between medium and high, between 1440p and 1080p. And the games we'll be testing Miniflex on is going to be Battlefield 5, Apex Legends, The Witcher 3, maybe throw like Fallout 4 in there or something like that. We'll throw in a few other games to try and run Miniflex through its paces. So here are the benchmarks, guys. I hope you guys enjoy. So first game up, as always, is going to be Apex Legends. This is my go-to game for benchmarking because this is the game that I play the most. So let's get right into the benchmarks for Apex Legends. So this was in 1080p on the low preset with model detail set to medium. So the maximum FPS was 145, which is the in-game cap for the game. And the average FPS was 136. The minimum FPS was 89. The 1% low was 90 and the 0.1% low was 81. So as you can see from those numbers with Apex running at 1080p on the low preset with model set to medium it ran extremely good i would highly recommend playing a modified small form factor dell optiplex 5070 on these settings for apex it felt great it was silky smooth and i was actually able to play pretty much to my normal potential and able to win a lot of gunfights and we actually even took the win during this game as well so this computer definitely runs apex at 1080p very very well Considering how well Apex ran at 1080p on the low preset, we're gonna try Apex Legends on 1440p with the same settings as the 1080p. With Apex running at 1440p, we got a benchmark of 134 maximum FPS, an average FPS of 97, an minimum FPS of 61, a 1% low of 63, and a 0.1% low of 51. So as you can see, Apex Legends running at 1440p on Miniflex is actually not too bad. It's playable, however for me, I would want the average FPS to be a little bit higher. I'd want it to be around 110, 120 FPS instead of 97, but for me personally, I'd be playing Apex at 1080p on Miniflex. Moving on to the next game that we'll be benchmarking, the next game we'll be benchmarking is Battlefield 5. Now I chose Battlefield 5 over 2042 just because it's not as buggy, it's more stable, and I just enjoy playing Battlefield 5 more than 2042. So with that said, let's move into the benchmarks. This was running at 1080p on the medium preset with blur, chromatic aberration, vignette, and grain off. So with those settings, we got a maximum FPS of 120. I capped the FPS in the game to 120 to get a smoother experience while playing. The average FPS was 112. The minimum FPS was 86. The 1% low was 60 and the 0.1% low was 21. So as you can see from those benchmarking numbers, we actually had a very good experience with Battlefield 5. I was actually really, really surprised at how smooth the experience was after I capped the game FPS to 120. If I let it go on unlimited, for whatever reason, I had these really bad frame pacing issues. So the game would stutter a lot. And that's still kind of evident by the 0.1% low of 21. I kind of did it every once in a while. This was a 25 minute game. So we played it from beginning to end. And this was the result by capping the FPS to 120. It made the experience just so much better. So I recommend doing that if you plan on playing Battlefield 5 on a small form factor Dell Optiplex PC. Considering how well Battlefield 5 ran at 1080p, let's have a look at 1440p. So this was on the low preset in 1440p with blur, chromatic aberration, vignette, and grain off as well. So with those settings, and again, the game was capped 120 FPS, we got a maximum FPS of 121, an average FPS of 113, which is actually one higher than 1080p. The minimum FPS was 64, the 1% low was 50, and the 0.1% low was 12. This particular benchmark really surprised me, like really surprised me because it was almost the same as the 1080p benchmark. Now bearing in mind the minimum FPS was lower and so was the 1% low and 0.1% low. However, the average FPS was still higher than the 1080p benchmark that I did on Battlefield 5. Next game up is what I like to call the budget PC killer, which is The Witcher 3. And the reason why I call it the PC budget killer is because even today, 
This game pushes graphics cards to its absolute limit on the highest settings, as evident by the GPU usage on the upper left hand corner. Let's get into the numbers for The Witcher 3. So The Witcher 3 was running at 1080p on the high preset. I turned motion blur off because I don't like it personally. So the maximum FPS was 96. The average FPS was 84. The minimum FPS was 75. The 1% low was 72 and the 0.1% low was 69. Based upon those numbers, as you can see, I got a rock solid experience on The Witcher 3 using those settings. I also quickly tested The Witcher 3 on the Ultra preset on Miniflex, and I got around 60 FPS for the average FPS. With 1080p out of the way, let's bump that resolution up to 1440p. So the settings that we'll be using for 1440p is going to be the medium preset with motion blur off, which got us a result of a maximum FPS of 94, an average FPS of 84, a minimum FPS of 76, a 1% low of 73, and a 0.1% low of 71. And no, I did not make these benchmarks up. This is the footage you're watching of this benchmark. This is an insanely smooth experience. It doesn't get much smoother than that. So for me personally, I'll be playing The Witcher 3 on 1440p using the medium preset on Miniflex. Next and certainly not least is going to be the most optimized game I've ever seen in my life, and that is Doom. 2016. We played this game at 1080p on the Ultra preset and again I turned motion blur off. With those settings on Doom 2016 we got a maximum FPS of 200 which is the in-game engine cap for FPS, an average FPS of 189, a minimum FPS of 148, a 1% low of 124 and a 0.1% low of 99. So as expected, Doom 2016 works really good on Miniflex just because of how well it's optimized. This game could really run on a potato and it would perform just fine. So let's try 1440p, shall we? You can see on the upper left hand corner of the 1440p footage of Doom 2016, you'll see that the 1660 Ti is maxed right out. So this is giving the 1660 Ti inside of Miniflex a workout. This was played on the Ultra preset for 1440p with motion blur turned off. With those settings, we got a maximum FPS of 170, an average FPS of 128, a minimum FPS of 95, a 1% low of 89, and a 0.1% low of 79. So as you can see, even with 1440p on Ultra, Miniflex hits the 120 FPS minimum that I want for Doom 2016. So those were the benchmarks for Miniflex, everyone. Let me know what you think of Miniflex's performance in the comment section below. I'm very curious to see what you guys thought of the performance coming from this little guy. I personally was actually pleasantly surprised by Miniflex. I wasn't expecting it to perform as well due to thermal limitations, but luckily I was able to get those under control, uh, at least somewhat. So we're not quite finished with Miniflex. We're gonna try and improve this guy here for the next video. And uh, if you guys have any suggestions on improving Miniflex, let me know in the comment section below. I'd very much like to know if you guys have any improvements that I can do to get a little bit more performance out of Miniflex. But with that said, guys, that's gonna wrap up today's video. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. Like and subscribe if you wanna see more content like Miniflex in the near future. As always, my name is Ken also known as Wiltshire, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care, everyone. All right, Nessie, it's time to go shoot some more people in Apex.